it could easily be that you find on a flea market uh, an unknown uh, mains transformer. And in the Netherlands the mains transformers are in general made for 230 volts. In the past 220 volts. Now uh, 230 volts. And well, uh, what to do when you find on the flea market a completely unknown transformer and you don't know where the primary is or the secondary is, etc. etc. I found this transformer in the past and I tested it and that's the reason why you find here say uh, kind of demo or instruction how to find out um, an unknown mains transformer. Um, well, in fact the whole ID is not very problematic. Of course you know when you say find such a transformer in many cases you know where it comes from. Uh, could be say in whatever uh, electronic appliance and amplifier or whatever. So in many cases you know where the uh, primary connections have to be made. 410 volt, 230 volt, etc. etc. But when you don't know that, uh, you have to say make a kind of assessment of such a transformer. And here are a few points perhaps interesting to tell. Find out the primary coil. In many cases the primary coil DC resistance, so measured with a DC ohms meter. So in this, in this range is about 10 ohms up to 1500 uh, ohms. 10 ohms in generally means that it is a power transformer. And I don't know how um, low uh, such the value will be for a 110 volt AC 60 hertz circuit, but um, perhaps it's even lower. So do that measurement, find out in such an unknown transformer where you find here somewhere a coil that has a DC resistance in the order of approximately 10 ohms up to 1k5. And uh, the strange thing and the bad thing of course is also that it could be that you have on the secondary of the test former. So this is the secondary here. Uh, on the secondary also um, a coil, a winding that has the same resistance. But that means that you have to do say uh, a comparison. Compare where the uh, where the electrodes of the test former are uh, in many cases the, the primary electrodes are separated from the secondary electrodes, just like here. Uh, and uh, you can get more, say, good indications uh, where it's all about the primary. And of course, when you find different electrodes on the primary and measure them, you can see, for instance, that the uh, the primary coil goes from 10 ohm DC to approximately 100 ohms or so. And for tiny transformers that uh, in the order of 5 watt or so, often the primary uh, coil has a DC ohms resistance in the order of 800 ohms up to 1500 ohms. Uh, second point Uh, study how the analog DC meter reacts. That's also say an interesting issue. I have now uh, this transformer 
working on um, uh, 230 volts, so I cannot demonstrate that. But for power transformers, um, when you say connect such a DC ohms meter and you connect it to the to the primary, often that's in the 10 ohms up to 40 ohms range, you see the meter move, but not completely uh, in a straight and direct way. It moves in a kind of way delayed. That has everything to do with the back EMF of the primary coil. So when you see this effect, for instance, so here slow and here quick, uh, you, you have an indication that the primary coil, that you are on the primary coil, but of course that same effect will also happen <coughs> when you do such a uh, measurement on the secondary coil. But of course uh, uh, it is a good indication that you are measuring a primary coil. So find the DC ohms resistances of the primary and the secondary with an analog ohms meter, not with a digital ohms meter. It does not give the right information <coughs> uh, and especially about this say effect of the back EMF electromagnetic force that's generated when you connect a DC source to a coil and of course via such an ohms meter, analog ohms meter, you connect the DC source in the order of 3 volts to a coil. Anyway, so analog meter, use test lamps. So uh, that's a good idea. I do it here at the moment. This was the coil that I tested <coughs> and here I'm working now with a automotive lamp of 12 volt at 21 watt. You can connect that to the, uh, say, and test that by connecting all these, say, make all these connections here. Now the lamp lights up. And here it doesn't light up. That means that there is no AC connection here in between. So we have to do with two windings. So again, uh, when it is a say tiny transformer in the order of 5 watts or so, uh, could be 8 watt, 10 watt, you can use a bicycle lamp. 6 volts here for instance. As far as I know, oh, uh, 2 watt or so and there are also 12 volt lamps that uh, dissipate approximately uh, 5 or 10 watts and you can also use them to test the, the, the secondary of such a transformer. Uh, good advice, don't burn out your test transformer, transformer so don't connect here say a uh, on the secondary, especially on the secondary, a too low resistance that will make up, that will make that the, the secondary winding burns out. So uh, when you want to be very careful, start for instance with a bicycle lamp. When that burns properly, go to such a uh, Automotive lamp in the order of 21 watt. In between there are lamps of 10 watt, also useful. And that means that you can test and see how much current such a transformer can give out. Of course you need a DC, uh, sorry, an AC uh, current meter, many say simple uh, Hobby meters don't have an AC current meter, but there is of course the classical solution for that. Make a bridge rectifier here for instance. Use 1000 volt diodes that can handle 3 ampere or even more. That of course depends on the transformer that you want to test when you know that when you have the ID 
the touch it transformer can deliver um, uh, 10 ampere or 20 ampere use a very heavy bridge rectifier here and use a 4700 microfarad capacitor the AC voltage must be uh, doubled with 1.4 uh, to get the uh, the value to which the 4700 microfarad capacitor uh, that it has to withstand use always 20% higher so when you have here for instance 12 volts 12 volt multiplied by 1.4 and then here plus 20% for the capacitor uh, for the voltage that the capacitor has to handle of course always use a fuse here I've used also used in this here in this uh, test circuit this fuse always use a fuse say when you make mistakes here say shortcut the, the, the secondary the fuse will blow out and that's the the best thing anyway uh, so that was point six. Use a bridge rectifier, etc., etc. Don't burn out your transformer. Well, uh, is there more to tell? Well, of course, there's a lot to tell. Here, by the way, my oscilloscope that I'm working on. I've uh, lifted up the voltage to the horizontal amplifier. It works quite good, though I could not get the necessary voltage to move the dot completely out of the screen in the prime uh, sorry in the left and the, and the right side but this was all about transformers anyway um, well what's more interesting to tell uh, about such a unknown transformer well you can in certain cases when you need a higher voltage do experiments by connecting say the uh, secondary windings here this is one secondary winding this is another secondary winding and you can connect them together say it's 12 volt here and it's 12 volt here okay uh, say you connect this to this could be that you have here 24 volts AC but could also be that you don't have there 24 volts AC because the phase of these two uh, secondary windings is not correct I have to put the camera down for a while to show what I mean I'm gumming now all the what I've drawn out so could be that in this case here and here uh, that you must not connect these windings together but this one to that one and here again very important so this one to that one and so that with these connections you get to 24 volts this is only an example 20, 12 here 24 volts so now you have 24 volts here in the other case it could be that you don't see anything because the phase of the two coils on the secondary is not correct made. So my camera will stop within uh, 30 seconds. That's also say an important thing. When you want to get a higher voltages, mind the phase of the uh, all the separate secondary windings.